Training.com, CWI prep course. Come visit us at our website at train-eng.com, pronounced training. This is our CWI prep course. This is a, as you go through some of these videos, these will be some snippets or samples out of our online training course. If you like what you see here in the sample section, come and visit us and take the course. Our CWI, CWE online part A video course, $149. It's um, self-study, CWI exam. Everything's an online video course. CWI prep course, welding safety, safe practices for welding inspectors. Module 2, Part 1. Okay, in this part of the module, we're going to just hit the introduction. We're going to cover ANSI Z49.1, Safety and Welding and Cutting and Allied Processes a little bit. Arc welding hazards, hazards in welding and cutting, and then protective clothing. And then we'll move on after this part of the module into other various welding safety issues and hazards recommended reading okay we've got module two on the welding inspection and technology it covers um, a lot of this material um, we've got ANSI Z49.1 safety and welding cutting and allied processes this is a free download you can go on the internet and get this one um, the next two or three documents you can track down off the internet too. I like the military ones because they're free and you can um, find a lot of good information in there. And once again, you can it's a lot of information and you don't have to pay anything. Our tax dollars have already paid for it, so might as well use it. Um, so you can go out on the internet. Those are some pretty good PDFs that talk about all kinds of goodies, good things in welding. And then the Miyash, Miyasha... Michigan OSHA fact sheet, Michigan General Industry and Safety and Health Division, pinch points, that's a good one. Um, we've all run across welders and other materials joining people that are missing fingers and arms and legs and stuff due to pinch point type accidents. So um, some really good information is out there. You just got to kind of dig around and um, a lot of this stuff is really helpful. Um, controlling hazardous fumes and gases during welding, OSHA fact sheet, DSG FS 3647 from 2013. Here's a whole list of OSHA standards that are applicable to welding. If you really want to dig into them, um, there's a whole list of them here. I'm not going to read through every one of them and list them out. Um, you can pause the, uh, the video player and write them down and start digging into them on your own if you feel the need to uh, extract extra pertinent information from these documents. Recommended reading number three, compressed gas safety feet from uh, Oregon OSHA, Welding Safety Hazard Program, Texas Department of Insurance, and Study Guide Electrical Safety Hazard Awareness, uh, Los Alamos National Laboratory. Like I said, there's a lot of different uh, places you can look and find some really good information and they might not necessarily be legally binding in your state but they are good information and generally if they're doing them in one place it's probably being done in the others but these were just documents that I was able, able to find when I was putting together this presentation so that's why I included them and if you want to look around and uh, you know really become a safety guru that's not necessarily a bad thing um, safety in welding and cutting and allied processes, ANSI ASC Z49.1. This is a document outlining the safe practices for welding and cutting operations. You can find this one for free on the internet. It's referenced in almost all AWS codes. When the code is mandated by contract or laws, this is also invoked. So really good document. You can, like I said, you can find it on the internet. The AWS gives it away, so there's no excuse for not, you know, having kind of perused through this thing and understand welding safety and, you know, the importance. I, I guess, and that's one of the things, soapbox time for a minute, but, you know, this is one of those documents to me that sets us apart from the developing world. We don't have, 
you know, 10 guys go to work and six come home. Hopefully 10 guys go to work and 10 guys go home. Human life is valued, body parts, all that kind of stuff. So um, this document is very important. And like I said, I think it's one of the ones that kind of sets us apart from, you know, developing nations where human life is, you know, not held in very high regard. Okay, introduction into the whole welding inspector uh, work environment. Um, welding inspectors work in the same environment as welders. Y you're there, you're breathing the same smoke or trying to avoid the same flash of light or trying not to get run over by a forklift just like they are. Um, so you need to be cognizant of the dangers that you could face in such a work environment. A lot of times these environments, it's not an office environment where the worst thing you've got to worry about is a paper cut or a bank. This is places where big heavy things are getting lifted. There's heavy equipment, there's smoke, there's flash, there's trip and fall hazards, electric shock hazards, uh, radiation hazards, ultraviolet light, dust and particles, smoke and fumes, falling objects any number of things that can go wrong in um, a welding and materials and joining, joining environment. So you just need to be cognizant of these things. And we're going to try and touch on as much of that as possible in this uh, presentation, in this, um, this module. Protecting workers, including inspectors, when performing welding operations depends on understanding of the hazards involved and the proper way to control them. Control of welding hazards includes avoiding eye injury, respiratory protection, ventilation of the work area, protective clothing, and having safe equipment to use. So we've got arc radiation, uh, arc welding hazards here. So we've got arc radiation right at the top of the list. UV damage to skin and eyes. Anybody that's ever had flash burn, gone home at night, knows exactly what I'm talking about. The old guys used to tell you to cut potatoes and put them on your eyes, or you just lay there on the couch with a cold washcloth on your eyes and wait for everything to heal up. You know, UV radiation, or, or you know, when I was a first learning to weld, I was TIG welding with short sleeve shirt on. Big mistake. UV damage to the skin. UV damage... It's just like the UV from the, from, that you're going to get from the sun. So you need to be aware of that. Um, electrical shock, you got to be, you know, don't be welding in water. Welding voltages are generally safe, but, you know, sometimes things can go wrong and uh, bad conditions can arise. Fumes and gases, you know, suffocation or long-term breathing of fumes. There have been studies done on, you know, some of these hexavalent chromes that in dust that people breathe in. Um, you need to be cognizant of the fumes and gases. Compressed gases. You've got, you know, fuel gases and then you've got the explosions of cylinders. If you do something wrong or you knock one of those cylinders over and the, the regulator gets knocked off or the valve gets knocked off, that thing becomes a rocket. It's going to punch through three or four walls. There's all kinds of videos on the internet and Mythbusters where those things will punch right through a cinder block wall. It'll go through there like it's punching through paper mache. So compressed gases are something we really need to be cognizant of. Burns, hot metals. Um, depending on what you're working on, where you're working, there's hot metal. I worked in a foundry and we did a lot of repair of castings. And the castings... Uh, there's always constantly a hot casting that you didn't want to put your hand on or up next to. And then there was people using a carbon arc gouging, throwing hot metal everywhere. Fire. Things catch on fire, um, depending on how you're welding and what you got going on. So you want to be careful with, you know, flammable materials inside the weld zone. These are, these, this is, you know, because you're not, it's not just you that can get in trouble on this one. You could cause a fire. There could be a fire started and, you know, depending on how many people are in the area, other people could be affected. Could be a loss of life. You never know. Hazards, welding and cutting. When welding and cutting is being done, three major safety hazards must be considered and adequate precautions taken. First, the eyes and exposed skin must be protected from the intense light, radiation, and heat of the welding arc and flames. 
Second, the welding, cutting, and grinding operations must be prevented from causing fires. Third, care must be taken in handling, welding, and cutting containers that have combustible and toxic materials. Cutting or welding must also be done carefully if materials in the fluxes, coating, and base metals produce explosive or toxic fumes when heated. So this says a lot. Um, you know, eyes and exposed skin. You need to cover up. Uh, I had a guy ask me years ago why welders always wear heavy sweatshirts and leathers and hats and masks and all that stuff while welding and it's the middle of summer and I said well then unless you've been burned you don't really understand it you're you're much better off just sweating profusely than you know getting damage to your skin from the intense light radiation so second um, causing fires you don't want a welding situation to cause a fire you know, sparks catching something on fire. So you want to keep anything that's even remotely close to being a fuel away from welding situations. You know, gases, anything flammable, paper, wood, whatever. If it can go up in smoke, you don't want it near welding. And then uh, we're talking about the welding on, of combustible or toxic materials. You know, there's millions of stories of people that I don't know, millions, but lots of stories of people that are welding on, you know, barrels, welding on, you know, barrels to make a stove or something. And then uh, there's a huge explosion because they didn't clean the barrel out properly or they shouldn't have been welding on it, whatever. These are things that we need to be um, cognizant of. And then... Uh, Fluxes, coatings, and base materials that expo ex uh, produce explosive or toxic fumes when heated. Another thing you need to look at, you know, really need to be careful with. Um, worked in a couple of places where we were very cognizant of uh, hexavalent chrome being kicked off. So we didn't do a lot of uh, welding with... Um, shielded metal arc welding on stainless steels and other alloys because we didn't want the hexavalent chrome being introduced into the welder's respiratory systems. So these are things that need to be thought about and addressed. It is essential that you wear your work clothes properly. Sparks are very likely to lodge in rolled up sleeves, pockets of clothing, or cuffs of trousers or overalls. Sleeves should be rolled down and the cuffs buttoned. The shirt collar also should be buttoned fully. Trousers should not be cuffed on the outside and the pockets not protected by button-down flaps should be eliminated from the front of coveralls and aprons. All other clothing must be free of oil and grease. Wear high-top safety shoes. Low-cut shoes are a hazard because sparks and molten metal could lodge in them, especially when you're sitting down. Common sense, you're going to be in a welding environment, you pretty much need to dress like a welder. You might not need to wear all the leather, but you should have thick shirts and thick wool clothing, or uh, depending on environment, maybe some chemically fire-resistant wool clothing, or uh, excuse me, cotton clothing. And you don't want your clothing to be covered in oil and grease because that just makes you a fire hazard. If leather protective clothing is not available, wool garments rather than cotton garments should be worn. Wool does not ignite as readily as cotton and it affords greater protection from changes in temperature. Cotton clothing, if it must be used, should be chemically treated to reduce its flammability. Synthetic fabric should not be worn. You don't want to be wearing a polyester or some kind of shirt like that, something that's not a natural um, material like wool, cotton, or um leather you know you're just asking for problems you're going to catch yourself on fire and it's going to be a dangerous situation here's some examples of protective clothing cut this out of a military manual um you know leather aprons these are more in tune with what a welder would wear but you know i think you want to have long sleeves if you need gloves you want to have a coat or some kind of heavy shirt you probably don't want to be in short sleeve shirt because you can get 
sunburn from the UV radiation if you're watching a lot of welding operations. So, um, you know, you want to have long sleeve shirts on. You want to have long pants. Um, generally, the kind of clothing you'd wear in an industrial environment. So, we covered the introduction. We covered Z49.1 safety and welding, cutting, and allied processes. We covered arc welding hazards. We covered hazards in welding and cutting. And then we covered protective clothing. Unlike a lot of other programs, we've got it set up so that you can do it a la carte. Um, if you only need to, you know, we've got different parts of the CWI course broken out. So if you don't need to sit through and take safe practices for welding inspectors or you have some strengths that you know of and you want to streamline the process and only hit the sections where you don't really have a strong or strong background or a great deal of proficiency, our program is set up so you can take some of these parts of the CWI online course a la carte. Pick and choose, put together what you want. Leave the rest, like a Chinese food buffet. We've got one section where it's questions, questions, and more questions. Um, we've got a whole number of CWI self-study question bank, 40 bucks. Come on in, take it, take a look, see. Um, if you just need questions, if you sat through another course and you just want to keep hitting the material, check out our uh, question bank, 40 bucks.